All right, so fuck yes, welcome to the Hockey Beat Host. As always, Brian Dressel. With me, as always, is Jonathan Hardesty. Pretty fast, pretty fast. Brian James. Yep. And Chewy Darso. I'm going to take it slow. Thanks. Yeah. Always Thanks for, derails the intro. For <laughs> just grinding the intro to a halt. Yeah. Nice. And See, at least I'm not doing that anymore. I want to make sure people appreciate the experience. Could you say that any slower? <laughs> I would like to make sure that people appreciate the experience. I, should I talk like William Shatner? No! Like, Damn! <laughs> <sighs> uh, and then because I'm a horrible person, I'm pretty sure I'm going to mispronounce it, even though he just told me twice in a row. We have specialist Mike Nyer here. Did I get you, it? You, you nailed it. And, yeah! And, and by the way, this is just the way I sound. I just I, These are my sultry tones. So. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. A nice, deep, buttery, sultry tone. Yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 when they say I have a face for radio, I, I truly do have a face for radio. <laughs> it's just a horror show over here. You could probably sell your tones at Trader Joe's. <laughs> in the in, in in front or in the back alley? Uh, <laughs> no, it's over near the um, their peanut butter or something. <laughs> that lovely nut butter. Yeah. Uh, so, Mike, because I didn't do my homework, do you have anything you want to plug in the front of our episode? Or are you? Uh, um, yeah, I guess. Uh, so, a, fr- a friend of mine and I just started a podcast. It's called That Other Show. Ooh, uh, that one. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, that one. <laughs> Somehow we got the domain for it, so it all worked out. But yeah, uh, so we just started. It's basically just me and my buddy bullshitting until we can figure out what the show is actually about. So, oh, those are kind of fun episodes. Yeah. I, I've seen, I've listened to shows like that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so don't listen to the first twenty episodes. Come back in a few weeks, and I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> Oh, a lot per week, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. I mean, like, starting in two weeks when our uh, our old episodes come out, you're going to find a joy of our first episode when we were still a video game only podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, that stuck. Yeah. And it's technically our second episode because our first episode was called BNN Test Test. So I have uh, <laughs> kind of just I was there for left the that one <laughs> in the dust. Um, I had serious questions about podcasting in general. <laughs> when I first heard that, yeah, that one was a it was a rough start, but we got there. We're still yeah. here today. Yeah, some of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, we killed the other guy. The other guy's dead. Should I be concerned about my fate after this? No, or? no, no. I think you'll be fine. We're good. We don't kill people anymore. A- anymore? Yeah. Okay, okay. That was like an episodes one through yeah. twenty sort of thing. And, like and, you hey, said, get twenty episodes hey, in. When did and, I make that agreement? Uh, you were episode twenty six, so you came in after the agreement. And also, we're oh, we're so I'm not part of the agreement. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> cool. You can still murder people. It's cool. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> uh, okay, let's do. A, uh, where have you been doing? Uh, I will go first. It's been a few weeks now, but I have seen Guardians of the Galaxy oh. Volume Two. Can I piggyback on yours? I guess that's fine. Okay. Um, so I'll go really quick then, since Chu usually has more to say than I do. I think it was a. Uh, I would venture to say it is the best sequel. Marvel has made outside of Winter Soldier. Wow. Um, Because Winter Soldier is tough because it's both a sequel and very much its own thing. So I kind of have trouble seeing this Captain America 2, even though it kind of is, kind of isn't. So as far as like a direct sequel, this is far and away the best they've done so far. Um, It's not a flawless movie. I hesitate to say that I love it, but I think it is very, very good. I'd give it like a solid 7.5 to 8 out of 10. uh, And I look forward to watching it again. Yeah, I mean, I, it was just fun the whole time. There's yeah. definitely flaws. There's plot holes. There's like some poorly delivered lines. There's some poorly handled characters. But the it's a laugh a minute and action the whole time. Fun See, effects. That, I don't think it was action the whole time. I think that's why I liked it as much because yeah. they actually were yeah. willing to take breaks and willing to let their characters have scenes and moments that were not punctuated by action, which so many Marvel movies and they were willing- can't have a weighty scene without an action sequence attached to it. And this one did not do that. And they were and I think that's to- why it's better. Yeah, and they were willing to put the action in the background in two specific scenes yeah. where you don't see the action, which the other Marvel movies would do. Yeah. And it said they played up the joke and yeah. I love that shit. Yeah. The, 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 the some... tape conversation and the opening. I was like, yeah. I don't want to see this fight. I want to see the vestiges of this fight and have this imagination that it's just not going right. It was yeah. so good. Yeah. yeah. There's so many creative decisions in this movie that are just light years beyond the other creative decisions in the other Marvel movies. And I'm very excited for what, James Gunn does next, and especially because I hear he's going to be a big part of crafting Phase Four, which I think is a really cool thing, and I'm, makes me both reinvigorated and excited for what Marvel can do next. See, I want, awesome. I want them for this uh, Avengers movie to put the final <laughs> Thanos fight in the background, have all the Avengers come and punch the shit out of him, <laughs> but in the front you've got Groot just playing chess, <laughs> with Rocket or something, yeah. like do something subversive, and I think that's what ties into that. The movie was subversive and in, in yeah. against its own self, against its own brand. Yeah. So, we'll do a full episode on this thing for sure. Once oh, we yeah. the Blu-ray. I was I was gonna say we're we're here to talk about another movie. Yeah, right? I didn't <laughs> see that. yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna throw something out on top of that. Uh, when I saw the movie too, I went to an Emerald Knights screening of it. That's the comic store I go to here in Burbank, 
And for most of the big comic booky movies, they do a, uh, they rent out the Lamely in North Hollywood for a private screening. They sell tickets at the store uh, in a couple weeks leading up to it. And it was great fun. They do trivia before. They give out little prizes and comic books from the store. Great to go see one of these movies with just all nerds in the audience. That sounds really cool. Yeah. Oh, do you know if they're doing it for Wonder Woman? I can tell you shortly do you want to do you want to talk about your experience with the guardians first okay <laughs> i just kind of want to go over to emerald right now and go what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on hold on i'm looking uh, at they might, they doing they it might be doing yeah. it <laughs> uh, let's not jump the gun the but, james gun <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna go uh, <laughs> good choice uh, Pun, but puns that no one told me about keep that. it down because we are all just talking about guardians because that is the most yes. thrilling <laughs> thing we've done so they're doing wonder woman spider-man and thor Good. Oh, boom, shakalaka. We should maybe go to the Wonder Woman so that when all the Marvel people try to be stupid, we can punch them in the face. Nope, they won't. <laughs> it's a great time. And that's yeah. actually a DC heavy store. It's called Emerald Knights. Okay. Yeah, that is that's kind true. of a. <laughs> that's true. Wow. Yeah. Um, but my experience with Gal- Guardians of the Galaxy. You just Why turned you into Yondu. <laughs> because there's a lot of Southern characters in the movie. There are. Mary Poppins, all? Like a, it, I would say that like half of the Ravagers have Southern accents almost. That's cool. Um, but I just thought. Talking about how you guys were talking about the action, the action in Guardians had a lot more purpose to it than they do in a lot of other Marvel movies. Like, honestly, I enjoyed the sister fight. It wasn't a yeah. cat fight. It was a sister fight, and it which was, was fantastic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the, the whole movie, when you break it down, it wasn't about saving the galaxy. It was about saving your family, which yeah. is all things that are wonderful. And I thought was... Just, it has more emotions in it than I've gotten from a lot of other Marvel movies where it's not just about being fun. It's all about like really accepting yourself and loving the people around you. Yeah, and it's so good about broken families. All these people come from like, you know, rough parentages and they like form this family with each other and stuff. Yeah, which people get mad at us about, but I thought it was handled way better than they did in Civil War. Uh, there was no family in Civil no, War. No, it was all about... <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say it was handled much better than it did in Fast and Furious 8. Civil like, War. Oh, you're right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much about Tony Stark and him not being able to handle his the, the death of his parents. Like oh, That yeah. was that the was reason at the very end of the movie, the whole reason the Civil War even happened. But see, therefore, you can... <sighs> didn't even, you forgot about that. So there's a good example of why it wasn't so important. Even though they tried, yeah. So yeah. welcome to the Marvel podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> does anyone have a where have you been doing that does not have to do with Guardians of the Galaxy? Oh, n- I, oh. Y- not Galaxy. You go. <laughs> okay, okay. All, all, all right. So I, still within comic book realm. Yeah. <laughs> so so I've been playing Mass Effect and Andromeda for. All right. Oh my God. I I I don't know for how long. It feels interminably long. Like I'm getting decades. ready to throw something at you if you start yeah. spoiling things for me. <laughs> well, don't, don't worry. Don't throw but, my cheese. <laughs> because every, everything that I've played so far has just been the side quests and additional tasks, and that's been about 30 hours of gameplay. And <laughs> It's I'm, the most unrewarding 30 hours, isn't it? I, I'm, I'm, I'm losing my mind, and, <laughs> and this is doing this right now is my only reprieve because otherwise <laughs> I would be playing it and it's it's my hell what was who's the greek god that's continuously pushing the rock up the hill that's me that's me with mass effect andromeda that's what did you do in life to be punished like this <laughs> well got into the first three <laughs> Actually, <laughs> did you def- did you defend the third one too much and like how dare you? Yeah, you, know? you thought we were bad before. <laughs> you know, I I actually don't defend it, but then then again, I just I tend to play games and then I move on to the next one. So sure, yeah. Anyway, that's that's what I've been doing with my life. It's it's not that interesting. So no, I, I wish it was. I, John and I we've even done a, one of our rare video game episodes on the original Mass Effect trilogy. Like <gasps> love Mass Effect. It yeah, like, yeah. It, it, I, I usually make the argument that it's one of the best sci-fi anything. Like I put it in like my top five. Sci-fi franchises. Like, I would I would put Mass Effect two probably in my top three favorite video games ever. Yeah. So that, mm-hmm. I mean I, I really have high regard for this series. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I, I'd exactly. like to Sorry. I'd like to move on past I've this. I've been getting I, a lot. I think like, I've shit on EA every week for the last three or four <laughs> for making this game and ruining all of my favorite things. So. A- as a wife of a gamer, coming home to the difference between when I'd come home to Brian playing Mass Effect and just like him going, I can't put it down, honey. I got to finish this thing. It's so good. Oh my God. I want to, I want to leave you for Liara. I would have too. And then <laughs> to come home Same. now and just, he's just like, Ugh. 
Why is this everything taking forever? I don't want to harvest minerals anymore. This is so slow. I'm so bored. I'm like, who thought it'd be wait. fun to drive around a mountain? It's so sad. Wait, 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 I'm wait, like, wait, wait. It's so sad to take the joy from my husband, guys. They brought back our favorite part about the first game: boringly harvesting minerals. Oh, oh no, yeah. <laughs> they, they brought back even worse: driving around in terminally long, uh, just these ridiculous landscapes, and driving up mountains, being yeah, really mountains that you well. can't get your car over that you have to drive around because that's not a Annoying as fucking real life. Let's do it in a video game. You know what? And I, fun. Legi- and, and I legitimately <laughs> became a huge fan of Mass Effect myself because I enjoyed watching Brian play. Oh yeah. I enjoyed the storyline. Yeah. Now when I watch him, I'm like, God, this is boring. I'm gonna go somewhere else. It's, it says something when the Skyrim horse can traverse over any mountain <laughs> <laughs> and, and not the Nomad. <laughs> and I've done that. We have oh. half a horsepower on this buggy. <laughs> and even oh. the Mako itself from Mass Effect 1 could traverse anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That yeah. thing was... I got sick physically like has, uh, with all my traversal. I, I don't understand <laughs> the Mako traversal. hate. I, I enjoyed the Mako. I thought it was fun. I did. I liked mm. it, too. I, I just liked it because it was the most, like... Unless, as long as you had shields, it was the most indestructible vehicle right. ever. Right. As soon as your shields went down, you're basically driving a paper mache car. But... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, John, what about you? Where was your where have you been doing? We got a whole thing to talk about today. Yeah, uh, so I, I started, I got super bored with Mass Effect, and in a fr- fit of frustration, I started Batman Arkham Knight. Oh. I really liked that game. I know yeah, a lot of people didn't, but I really enjoyed it. I can't put it down. I, I can't put it down in comparison to Mass Effect, which I can put down yeah. every second of play. So how do you feel about Batman's shitty tank driving versus Mass Effect's mm. shitty tank driving? I had so much fun driving that tank. I, had I know so it's good. It's so it's good. It's so not Batman, but it's so it's fun to so, drive. Yeah. <laughs> and they give you so many puzzles to do with that. I'm like, this is kind of fun. And then the chases where you're shooting down people, sideswiping them, and I'm a bad driver in games. <laughs> so I'm just like, Gotham is wrecked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My Gotham is wrecked. <laughs> Oh, Everything's I, just a smoking pile of rubble. It's I also, not, not too unlike Los Angeles after <laughs> yeah, John yeah, drives. So. Exactly. <laughs> I also like the fix it with the line of dialogue. Yeah, if you hit anyone, they're just tased and asleep. You're not murdering these people. <laughs> yeah. And I love how out of the way they go to show you that. So if yeah. I, oh, yeah. a, a criminal just walks up to my car, I'm sitting there trying to figure out what I have to do because yeah. I can't figure out the map really. And it's just like he walks up and touches it. He's like, ah! <laughs> out of the way. I'm like, yeah. It's just like in real life when somebody touches your car, right? Yeah, right. I mean, I got so into that. I, I bought like the hundred dollar full on special edition. I've played all the DLC. Oh my God. I really liked that game. I know it's not perfect, but I had a ton of fun. I am having a lot of fun oh, with it. Oh, kind of like our subject of today. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Segway. Yeah, you, you guys are really professional. Let's here, derail that segue by talking about the segue. <laughs> <laughs> Does a segue have a sound effect? Damn it! I tried. <laughs> Oracle, I need you to segue me into this movie discussion. <laughs> Can't Batman, I'm busy. <laughs> uh, so today's movie is Moonlight. Oh. Nice! Oh. Yeah, I was wondering if you were gonna do it. <laughs> you tricked me again. <laughs> Damn it! Uh, wait, 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 no, but we lost. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, m- fucking La La Land won it. Uh, no, I even emailed uh, Mike saying, like, I promise I won't talk about Moonlight. <laughs> it's like, nah, I gotta get one in there. Um, but no, so today's movie is obviously La La Land, uh, and it will be a fun conversation because I think we, I, from what I kind of gathered from pre-recording, I think we're all over the board on this one, yeah. um, which is good. I like that. That's going to be great. Um, so really, really quick, uh, the movie was a smashing success, Meh. huge, <laughs> like you can't 90s deny reviews. That, Ryan. Made, made back like what, t- only 12 times its money? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like... like it's not 50 times as much. It money. didn't win any awards or anything, did yeah, it? It won <laughs> countless awards. It, it, it was, uh, I'm not going to bother the numbers of the reviews because no. it was runaway success. Cost 30, made 400 some change, yeah. won every oh, wow. uh, Oscar it was nominated for. Nearly every Oscar. Oh, did it nominated. this one? It missed Best Picture, hence uh, the Moonlight joke. It tried. <laughs> is, is, is there a way to talk about this movie in a way to just couple it from all of the hype? Ha- welcome, ha- welcome well, to our show. No, but I mean, I, all of all the stuff with the Oscars, all the controversy. I, I feel like it's <clears throat> kind of indelible to it. But I, we're going to do I'm our derailing. no. I'm we're going to do our best to do that today because it, <laughs> it, it is kind of the the problem is, and uh, even Chewie mentioned this when we were watching it. It's tough to watch this movie now without the clout of this is both the greatest and worst movie ever made, and everyone <laughs> is like on both ends of those spectrums. So sure. and viciously so. Oh yeah, this one is like a. It's one of those very like fiery like no it fucking blows like it doesn't and but we'll get into it yeah um but first before we do any of that we have to do a breakdown 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 
Mike, are you excited to do a breakdown on La La Land? I have no idea what How's I've your singing into. voice? If I were to make you sing the whole thing, how would that go? Oh, God. <laughs> okay. okay. You, me, but me, no, me. You, you can sing it like Ryan Gosling, not like Emma Stone. So you're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, you have a really good voice. So, yeah. Well, that, that that's about, uh, about the only thing on me that's good. So, you know, everything else is just a shambling wreck. So. Well, now people well, will be able to see it. Well, <laughs> here's the thing if you can sing the 30 second breakdown, I don't give a shit if you success or fail, because that is totally a success. All right. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really being put on the spot, but I, I, oh, I guess yeah. I can give it a try. Do you, do you want me to give it a try? <laughs> I would love it if you gave it a try. All right. Um, <laughs> all right so are right. you ready I mean, to go? I, I, I have no idea. I'm going to do this blind. Let's, let's try it out. <laughs> Perfect. All, all right. right. So La La Land in 30 seconds. Here we go, 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 go. Uh, boy meets girl. <laughs> they sing a lot of songs for some reason. They float in space. <laughs> Their f- career ambitions work against them. They get separated and have a life, and then they see each other. Montage. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> yeah, I would say that's pretty good. That deserves a round of applause. Well S- done. Singing is not my fault. Montage. <laughs> Montage. <laughs> I would throw some flowers at you, but you already got them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have all the flowers surrounding me right now. Oh, I thought about that on the way over today. I'm like, I think I'm going to try to make him sing it. I don't know how well that's going to go. It went well, swimming. Clearly, clearly, we're going to have to cut this I part mean, of the show out. Your <laughs> singing was about as uh, enthusiastic as theirs was. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, oh, foreshadowing for later on. I like it. Uh, so if you did not, if you have not watched one of our videos before, you have the chance to throw a free insult my way for doing a good job on this. If uh, you would like, to. I, I I will reserve it. Can I pocket it? You is can it a pocket I'll, insult. If you reserve it, I do hope that you use it because so far everyone who's done that has forgotten about the insult. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I just will, try will. to remember at some point to say something really mean to me. See, see, what I'm going to do is analog. Take okay. a, take a note. <laughs> now I'll, I'll make a big note. Insult him. Acoustic. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so let's get into this thing. Um, we, we've kind of already touched a little bit on the hype, so I don't really want to go too far into it because this movie really, really, really suffers if you talk too much about the hype. And I, I, right. I realize this is probably the first time we've done something after it's been on video for a while where it still feels like it might be a hair too soon because people are still really passionate about it. But I I, I think we're, we're just about at that breaking point where we can talk about it cleanly. It's mm-hmm. really, the for me, the hype is detrimental for myself just because when we saw it there wasn't as much hype we saw it pre i mean there was some hype we saw we, it like a couple weeks after it came out when it was ba- still basically only in like new york and la and yeah. all of our friends were in the films in new york and were like you gotta see it it's so fucking yeah. good yeah. and then when it got its wide release and everyone started there was such a weird experience because it's like everyone started agreeing with us and how much we enjoyed it but then they took it too far and i started getting angry yeah, it's because that. when it got to be awards season, I was just like, I really enjoyed La La Land. Wait, why is it getting all these nominations? Right. I mean, it's a really great movie, but all these other movies are, are better. Yeah. Like, deserve these awards, mm-hmm. and you're giving it to... Stop. <laughs> Emma Stone instead of Amy Adams? What? <laughs> <laughs> We need yeah. to stop talking about Amy Adams no. on this podcast. You never will. <laughs> you never will. <laughs> Emma it's Stone just, is my Amy Adams, so I'll fight you all day. I mean, that. that was my biggest thing because it's like I really enjoyed Emma Stone in this movie, but I did not think she gave like an Oscar winning performance by any stretch of the imagination. I, I think there are moments in there that she definitely hits that. This uh, I still think she did a I don't want to say better job, but I'd say she did a more rememberable job memorable job in uh, Birdman. Oh yeah, yeah I was going to say you can compare better this to movies. her character in Birdman and yeah. you could see kind of her range cuz mm-hmm. she does a great job of being like the smart ass punk daughter and she does a great job of being like the wide-eyed sappy uh, uh trying to be an actress. Yeah, she plays like a more subdued version of like Naomi Watts and like Mulholland Drive where mm-hmm. she's just so starry-eyed and everything's great. She's like a more realistic version of that character, which I yeah. I, I like. I like especially in a movie like La La Land where it's about trying to make it in this industry. It's kind of nice to have that everything's going to be okay. And she kind of has that, I've been saying this for 10 years and it hasn't been, six. but I'm still, well, sorry, six yeah. years, but like, and it just, it's just not working. And that's such a real character. And that's why yeah. I think she did a good job. And no, I, I think I'm not saying that she didn't do a great job or that she didn't do a good job. I just don't think she did a great job. That's where I got mad at award season because I just, yeah. One of the things that, so I'm going to, I'm going to bring a, 
a nerdy sports stat term in here, but Ooh. like value above replacement, right? Sure. And and I try and think of okay, if you just put an average actor into this movie in place of Emma Stone, how much would it hurt this movie or help this movie, right? So if I took Emma Stone and replaced her with Amy Adams, or with say this, say Emma Watson, who was M- originally offered and the Amy part, Amy Adams can sing, right? Yeah. So so how much better? Same for Ryan Gosling, and and I'll take everything out, but like the singing ability or or whatever, how much better would it be? And it's like. Emma Stone's like, eh, she did an all right job, but I think this person could have done better. A- Emma Watson could have done better. Yeah. I think so, for my, sure. My personal favorite performance for Emma Stone in this movie is at the 80s themed party. When she's <laughs> yeah. mocking him. Yeah. Emma Stone funny dancing that, again. Yeah. She's really I loved good at that. It. I loved yeah. it. Like that was the the sarcasm of her character to me is the best part of her character. So, I, I agree with you, but like my major thing that uh, I've started doing in movies, it's actually kind of been a recent thing. Uh, when somebody wins an award, say for best actor, best actress, like Emma Stone did for this one, I like to think about that scene. Like, what was the scene that when the voters watched this movie that made them go, "I'm voting for her"? And I think that she has that scene in this movie, and it's good enough where I go, "I can." Whereas I still think Amy Adams should have won it. I can see why they went this way, and it's after her play when she quits. That defeated scene oh, where yeah. she's just done and she's going home she has so much emotion and she is yeah. holding back so hard because she's so mad at ryan gosling and she doesn't want to let give that to him either it is such a masterful performance like that one scene is so yeah. and good. i really enjoy her during the entire dinner scene yeah oh, that's yeah. 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 that yeah. dinner scene yeah. starts so happy yeah and then it gets so depressing and real but then we get into the thing that i hate about her character which she, is she doesn't stay when yeah. things get tough she runs away. Yeah, but that's a that's a good character. It's flaw. a good character yeah. flaw. But yeah. that's why I hated her character at times because I was just like, "What the fuck are you doing, you spoiled little thing? You need to fight for this shit." <laughs> yeah. But I I love that they gave her a character that has, like, that's a real human flaw. And a lot yeah. of movies like yeah. this, especially one that's like like this, it's so dreamlike. Mm-hmm. It's so yeah. like, L.A. is a magical place. It, it has these characters with very real relatable. Flaws. And to put a character that's so at odds with the romanticism, yeah, is a very interesting touch. And yeah. her character well, wanted the romanticism without the conflict. Yeah, right. you can yeah. you can tell like throughout the movie she's talking about um, when her and I'm I'm not gonna remember character names. I'm just gonna say Emma That's and fine. Brian uh, when they're on the Warner lot and she's like, oh, Ingrid Bergman and and Humphrey Bogart. They they were at the, was it Bogart? It was anyway. Was it? Yeah, yeah. They were they were at that movie. You can see that she has some of that romanticism. It like seeps out, but then it it just goes back into the shell. And that did a really good job of building that character like you you really built the ties for them yeah Yeah, i think she pulled a lot from her life because i I did read some tidbit that she kind of drew on some of her experiences first moving to la but so much of that actually does follow like what she went through except emma stone didn't give up like her character does exactly yeah if it wasn't for ryan gosling's character she would have accomplished none of her goals he but makes the, her such a priority. He saves her. He's the reason she gets the movie, and then he lets her go. But the argument there is that he also wouldn't have accomplished any of his goals if it wasn't for her. Mm-hmm, right. Yes. To uh, less of a degree, but yes. I mean, he even uses the sign that she mocked. Well, that's right. what I mean. Like, she, yeah. she encouraged him, but everything he did mm-hmm. was bec- was for her, really. He chose the he did worked on the band for her because he thought she needed him to provide for her. And then he got the phone call and instead of going, blah, my ex left me, why should I help her? He drove to Boulder City to drag her back to LA to make yeah. sure she went to this audition. And then she was handed the role of a lifetime. It's like the people who are perfect for each other but can't be in a relationship yeah. or they yeah. are because, gonna fuck up their careers. So that's exactly yeah. what it is. And, and then it, he yeah, he took the name for that she wanted him to use, which is still like his love letter to her. Mm-hmm. And he still would have opened a club, whether or not he was with her, whether or not it would have been as successful. I don't think, so. I don't think he would have. I think he would have, least, have stayed. He would have stayed in that band. I, I think he yeah. either would have stayed in the band if he'd ever joined the band. Um, he would have stayed in the band, or he would have kept doing what he was doing. Mm-hmm. I think she was such an influential push in his life to get him to go where he needed to go. I, I don't think I, it was. I don't think it was as noticeable as it was for. His influence on hers, hers was on him. But I, I think the movie does a good enough job saying that if she wasn't in that relationship with him, he wouldn't have moved on with his yeah. life. Yeah. I, Especially because when you first meet him with his sister, he's such an asshole and so stuck in a rut. Yeah, yeah. he does humble her. He, she humbles him. Yeah, yeah I, I think I think they both represent two different characterizations oh, yeah. of what it's necessary to survive, right? Like his 
drive and and passion and her dreaminess and romanticism and and they both those are both necessary parts and that's oh it's a little symbolism going yeah. on in, well, in there well, and <laughs> it, it's, it's it's weird that like the weirdest thing that popped in my head head is uh, lord of the rings actually the, the book <laughs> That like I, that, what, I can't wait weird. for they're, you to they're, explain this. Their journey, like th- this thing that th- them helping each other, ultimately means they can't be together. It's you know, you, you, Frodo can't return to the Shire. He doesn't right. get to stay. He has to move on. And just that, those fatal flaws, they sharpen each other. Yeah. Iron sharpens iron, right? Yeah. But then it's just they can't. It just yeah. not, it's what, why the end of this movie is so tragic. It's, yeah. Yeah. You Same. saw what their perfect life would have been were it not for this process of going through this is Honestly, ultimately what ruined them. I still fight for the fact that this movie isn't that tragic at the end. I mean, oh, yes. it's so tragic. I think it's, 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 it's bittersweet. I, know, yeah. I think it's bittersweet. I think they're both happy at the end. Mm. They would have a different happiness if they had been together, but they both achieved their end but, goals. But here, it's the, the argument in this movie, and this is the same argument. It's actually my biggest complaint in the movie is that all the themes in this movie are kind of the same themes that he just did in Whiplash. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Which is... Don't get me wrong, Whiplash is a fucking amazing movie. I'd argue better than La La Land. Um, yep. but, no argument there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's the, argu- the thing that they show such a good job here is the Damien Chazelle does a great job showcasing people who want to be happy in their career, not in their life. And this movie, they both nail that. Mm-hmm. They get exactly what they want out of their career, and they sacrifice their life to do it. But they, And that's not saying they're unhappy in their life. She still gets married to a jazz musician. He's a drummer. But I, like to, I like to think that it's the same character from. I mean, <laughs> I see, do you think that? I, say, I think what works the most about this movie do. is that I think Damien Chazelle went through this process in his life yeah. because he's drawing from it so hard and it's so real. I've just distorted the shit out of the mic. <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, I think that's it. That's exactly what this movie does the best. Well, that's yeah. why it's interesting. At the very end, I'm not convinced Ryan Gosling is happy that he got what he wants. What he really I th- wanted. I, I, I think, think they're he, both feeling bittersweet about they're it. They're bittersweet, yeah. but I think in his, in his end, he lost out. The mo- like he, well, yeah, he yeah. lost so out on it, a f- potential family. No, no, no. So no. here's the thing. I, I think I think you're wrong. I, I don't think I think they're both bittersweet about it, and I think that's why you have that montage when they see each other. You mm-hmm. have the oh fuck, we could have done this together. Mm-hmm. There was a reality, a real way to do this where we did it together, and we both ended up in the same place. But that didn't happen. And I, uh, that, that montage is such a fucking kick in the nards because of that. Yeah. I don't think the montage, in the montage, I don't feel that they both got their end goals because at the end of the montage, she's still a famous actress, but he's not running a club. They, Isn't he? No, they go to a different club. It's a different guy oh, playing the music. Right. Yeah. Yeah, the, like they, he really, the in the montage, he sacrificed all of his goals to make sure she achieves hers. Like he goes to Europe with her, plays in oh, a club there, right, right. but yeah. then you never see him play music afterwards. Mm-hmm. Oh, like in, in the montage, it's still all about her reaching her goals, which was his end game, really, in the movie in general. Like he he got what he wanted in the end, but it, he sacrificed a lot to make sure she got her way. And th- th- for me, that's True. just the positive thing about this movie is like, look at this discussion we're having about art versus settling and all that. And it's yeah. like that cru- no matter like depending on where you fall on the crux of their argument is how you're going to read that ending movie, mm-hmm. whether Ryan Gosling got what he wanted, whether like he would have been better off. Like it's a very interesting thing that. Took, I mean, surprised me in this movie. Here, so the the argument that I've heard from this movie for many times, kind of changing gears here a little bit, uh-huh. is that the movie sets up false promises. So it sets up like this is the movie about these two and how they should be together. It's a very positive, happy movie. The very first song is "Another Day of Sun." How great is this all going to be? And then it just goes worse and worse and worse and worse. And it's I think that's all on interpretation. So I have a lot mm. of friends at my old job who are like, I didn't like it because the first song's so happy and then it ends in such a blech place. I'm like, I think it's kind of the point though yeah I, well and and another day of sun right like the whole song is about things things are gonna suck and you're gonna get knocked down but this is a city where it, you, you come back and it's sunshine and just pick yeah. yourself you up and fun detail like they stopped traffic on that road like yeah yeah, yeah. like I, I by the way side note i drive that interchange every day that's yeah. <laughs> on my way to work so it's like i was like Whoa. How often do you get out of your car and dance yeah. with your strangers? Uh, you know, like once a week. You know, you it's, a, okay, it's a Friday cool. thing, Just want to make right? sure this movie's real. Yeah. <laughs> the th- I mean, it, it really illustrates the thing about Los Angeles and Hollywood where you can't be a passive participant. No. Unless totally. you're already established with famous parents and money, like which neither of them had, you need to keep working at it. And that's really all it is because you have to network, you have to go to the parties whether or not you feel like it. Yeah. And you have to just keep applying keep applying and if you know, if the applying doesn't work make your own that's really LA yeah 
there's also a take I heard where it's like they didn't like that it romanticized this thing that like all like all Hollywood is so romanticized and it's like for these characters you, for any and in real life you have to kind of have that to be able yeah. to to be able to just get up in the morning to you know to not give up like Emma Stone started to you know just yeah. to not quit well, she go away did. She, yeah. Yeah. she she quit. fully gave and up he yeah. pulled her he back. dragged her back in yeah. kicking and screaming cuz no one like unless you're really good friends with someone no one's really dragging you back it's yeah. you have to keep that romanticism alive and it's I think it's good that it's so romantic in its edges and yeah. kind of frames it so romantically because you kind of need, like, you need to keep it alive. Well, and I feel like you have to put this movie in context of the other, in the pantheon of Los Angeles movies, right? Like yeah. Falling Down, that, that, that movie made LA seem like hell, I, I think. Drive? I, yeah, right. Like there, there's, there's a ton of movies where LA gets a bad rap and this is probably the first one in a while where LA is yep. portrayed romantically. So the last one I remember where people made LA look like a fun place to be was uh, 500 Days of Summer. It's another very tragically romantic movie. Yeah, uh, for sure. A male gaze movie is yeah. what I like to call yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> but like this movie I I think that the people like the argument I've seen is like it's just so LA. Like I I hate that argument because yeah, yeah it is. It's fucking La La Land. Like that you yep. can't get mad at a movie that in its title is yep. LA right. about being so LA. I'm like, so yeah. That's what you signed up for when you decided to watch the movie. I wish, like, what? I wish there were more scenes in Boulder City. That's really what yeah. I was looking for out of this movie. Yeah, it's like, it'd be like getting mad at Manhattan for being about New York. It's like, fuck off, dude. That's the name of the movie. <laughs> well, I thought so, we were going to go to Buffalo in Manhattan. I didn't understand. I do, do want to bring up t- two things. I'll start talking about a lot of things that I loved about the movie afterwards. <laughs> Uh, two things that disappoint me in this movie. Uh, okay. Um, one, of a musical, it really peters out at the end. 100% uh, agree. Because it starts out like with that. some good musical moments, good dancing and stuff, uh, and then we get Ryan Gosling on a pier kind of mumbling a song. <laughs> that won stars, an Academy Award. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> City, City of, of Stars. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, but after... After the performance on stage with the band, I can't remember another song being sung. Her audition song. Oh, okay. Her audition right. song. So that's one. It, After that, that, that's one. It doesn't even end on a musical number. It ends mm-hmm. on a choreographed number with lots of spe- spectacle, but they're montage. not singing. <laughs> I mean, not even that montage. Yeah, yeah. But the, <laughs> right, right. I, I uh, see what you're saying, but that entire spectacle is fucking gorgeous. I mean, no. Oh, yeah. fu- I mean, that's what I'll talk about what I love. Yeah. But it's weird to not end a musical on a musical number. Um, and the f- this movie is almost slaved the classics. I mean, I love the homages and everything, but what I was discussing about Ryan Reynolds sacrificing everything for her, it's an entirely a white knight movie. Oh, yeah. He is her white knight. Without him, she wouldn't achieve any of her goals. Well, and it's all about like the woman needing the man to achieve her goals, which... I mean, however much I did enjoy the execution in this movie, isn't the best message. <laughs> I, I would. The only reason I disagree with you is because he still gets what he wants. Because he still gets his own club. If his what his goal was to make her the most famous person in the world, and then he does like a fucking Bruce Banner walk off to an alley like, oh, I did what I could, then I would agree with you. I mean, that's what but the, the difference is that he is. gets his own club. Yeah. He gets exactly what he said in the very beginning of the movie. His goal in life is to open his own jazz club. At the end of the movie, he's opened his own jazz club. Yeah. Can I bring up something that is it really bothers me? Yeah, go would, for it. Would anyone disagree with me that Emma Stone is clearly the main character of this movie? Like, it's told from her point of view, and I think the movie, the tone of the movie changes along with her attitude, which is why I think it doesn't end on a musical number, because she's losing some of her, like, wide-eyedness about Los Angeles, and she's, like, settling in, and she's accepting this life that she's taken. It's not with Ryan Gosling, but she's achieved her dreams, yeah. and she's got a beautiful husband and child. Well, here's the thing, is that I think this is another case of the movie setting up false promises. By the way the movie opens with, you see the first half of her day, and then you see the first half as his day, you really make it feel like it's a two-pronged approach of these are joint main characters. But I think you're right. I think she is the main character. And but it's she's first build across the board. Exactly. So yeah. I think that's kind of like, it's another aspect of this movie kind of not juggling everything perfectly. Like where it is clearly Emma Stone's story. Yeah. Like through and through. But because they've put so much Ryan Reynolds in there, it Stop it. A, it gets Ryan Gosling. Did I say Ryan Reynolds? You both, you both did in the last two minutes. <laughs> I'm going to stick with Reynolds. So because they put Deadpool in there. So, so I'm going to go back. Value above replacement. Yeah. Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, See, yeah. if this was a Ryan Reynolds movie, I would have had an entire spiel about why he never took a shirt off. <laughs> but because they put Ryan Gosling in there, 
and they put them in so much they muddle the message of the movie and yeah. the actual story of the movie. Yeah. I, I appreciate everything Ryan Gosling did, you know, learning Ryan piano. Reynolds. It's, God, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to go. I appreciate what Ryan did. There and, we and go. You, 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 you figure oh, it out. You, 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 like, you like what I did there? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but like, I appreciate that he put all the work into it. Like I, I appreciate all the craft he put in, but like ultimately just meh. Nah, I, I, I don't remember it's, anything. From I, think, I mean, that's yeah. the problem me, with casting somebody in a musical that can't really <laughs> sing. Can, well, and can that's anyone a, sing and except think, for John Legend? <laughs> Emma Stone can sing. She's not great. She, she does can. not have a face for musicals, and that's maybe a little offensive to say. I think she's a beautiful woman, but when she sings out loud, her face gets so scrunchy and her lips look weird. Don't be well, such a th- face. <laughs> I blame that more on the cameraman and not knowing how to shoot yep. this sort of That's stuff. so true, too. Yeah. And Absolutely. how this one best cinematography. Yeah. Uh, uh, for, well, the, I, for the for the moving just, camera dance numbers, probably definitely which didn't was awesome. win for focus. Yeah, <laughs> but one well, I think the thing that I like Zing. about this the most also ends up kind of being its critique against it too is that when it's referencing these older classical musicals, all those actors have a lot of physicality, mm-hmm. and that was everyone like uh, Ginger Rogers didn't wasn't a dancer, but man, that dance you know those dances are magical. Right, there's such a phys- there's such a romanticism in there, and so we just don't do that. That's not our thing in this generation these are stuff. both like film actors you know ready for their close-up to make know, all the, the emotion come out of, the face. of emma stone i thought was great yeah i thought when I she was she, having fun yeah. in a scene you really felt it in her body yeah. absolutely like the the problem for me and i brought this up when we were watching there's that one like the first like the um they when they have their song about how they're not going to date that'll never work for them uh-huh. i think it's probably one of the best scenes in the movie and when you're watching it, it's like yeah they did a really good job with this like the dancing number is really great they all hit their cues at the right times but then uh i cards on the table i was in ballet for the first like 16 years of my life i watched this i know i don't look like a guy who's in ballet but when i watched we're, this we're I'm all like, just gonna let this go I, yeah we're not gonna <laughs> well, i made sure there was photos at our wedding your, yeah. <laughs> your opportunity to start <laughs> <laughs> but the 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 long and the short of it is like the the choreograph the choreography in this movie is very basic and mm-hmm. i mean that and like now i'm in my 30s so i haven't done this for half my life I can still do all the dance in this movie. Mandy Moore is going to have a real issue to pick, yeah. with, a real bone to pick with you <laughs> because the, of this podcast. The choreography in the beginning was Fantastic. not basic. Outstanding. F- outstanding. It's whenever it's just for Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone, who are not classically trained, It's they definitely dumb it down. And they the thing is, I'm not saying this in a bad way. I think they did it perfectly. Because well, they did just basic enough to where they look like they know what they're doing and they're doing it well. Right. Well, and that's the thing. And that's, like, that's great. And that's why I kind of started with like that's the thing I like. It, it made me think of those movies. It made me like, oh, I liked I liked what they were doing. I liked that kind of style. I liked the older classical musical, the that thing. And for that to evoke it, it was like, oh, I love it. But then, like you said, there's that basic element that you're like, on the other hand, this is basic. Well, yeah. So if this movie puts you in the mood to watch Singing in the Rain, you're gonna get really mad at this movie afterwards. Yeah. It's like, oh fuck, like that's so much better. But even but even something like you know Umbrellas or Cherbourg or you know yeah. American in Paris and you know, yeah. Well, yeah stuff like that. It's like you see all these things. You're like, oh I, yeah, you. It's really clear that he really, like, <laughs> anything with Gene Kelly, and you're just like, holy shit. Well, let's yeah. talk about the gloss on this movie. Yeah, the beautiful gloss of production design. This and this movie can, is extremely well designed. Oh, can yes. I say this is the best example of what an actual set looks like when they're walking away from the uh, coffee shop and they walk past like the sound rolling in the scene? Like yeah. that's a full on production, mm-hmm. better than I've ever seen one portrayed. In I movie. will say this: they did have to paint all the lights. Yeah, that's the, great. The, the lights the were lights, definitely freshly painted. <laughs> yeah, I, I was looking at it and be like, we don't use those lights on set. <laughs> they do not look that pretty. Come no, on, and they don't have any scrims or anything in front of them. I'm not a light, an electrician or a gaffer, so I always use the wrong verbiage. Every electrician and gaffer just went. That's not what those are. I know. <laughs> I call them right scrims. Them. I call them flags. I'm just like that thing, the white thing you put in front of that that light. But if you, miss, but if you somehow miss the actors, title of this movie, if you miss the title of this Oscar's movie, so white. <laughs> and then you get to that scene where they're showing all the filming. Yeah. So if you've missed the title and the th- that set, you're just not going to get but this movie. <laughs> the use of color in this film, I adore. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, this oh, movie is brought to you by Yellow and Blue. Yep. She is oh, yellow. Yeah. He is blue. Uh, She's blue sometimes. I mean, honestly, it makes sense because yellow is a classic theme for Coward. Even though she looks beautiful in it, she runs away a lot, so yeah. it makes sense. Uh, and blue is classically the color of hope, which they put on Ryan Gosling. Oh, symbolism. Uh, and then green <laughs> in their apartment 
Like when they are sharing an apartment together, it is red for passion and green for envy, which they use to such an advantage, especially during their dinner fight when they're just kind of bathed oh, in green. Yeah. And then and when she comes in, when she's happy and to see him behind her is yellow uh, sunflowers, which is like her like happiness color. And they use the happiness color in the montage at the end when they go to him being at her performance and they're all like clapping their hands, waving yellow flowers. I mean, the use of color in this film is so good and they must have employed so many talented ass scenics, which is great to see in a movie because scenics these days are way underutilized and they used them uh, to such a bang in the end sequence when they're going through the stage areas of the oh. different backdrops and just say like, it was gorgeous i can't praise this movie enough on that level can i say one thing you you, you say that she's yellow and he's blue isn't that green when you mix them together no! <laughs> <laughs> and ultimately white can't work right <laughs> One thing, one thing to go back though uh, about the colors. That's one thing I think also about Los Angeles, like the the apartment that they're in. The beginning, it's got like purple tiles or something. It's it's got like lots of crazy colors and things. And it's mm-hmm. there's so many little things that if you didn't live in Los Angeles, you wouldn't see and appreciate, right? Like the the um, just the tourism scenes, right? Like the uh, Griffith. Griffith Observatory uh, being empty. Oh, <laughs> I love the Griffith Observatory sequence in. because I love that they are illegal trespassers, obviously doing drugs. Right. They went to. The, they are tripping. They balls. are tripping in that. Or, or yeah. uh, what's it called? The planetarium. Planetarium. There we are. Like they start Planet floating. Arium. I'm sorry. There's some LSD or something going on. And we all know the observatory closes at dusk. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, if you're watching at that point and you still don't get it. <laughs> the title, the set, and you just still don't get it at the observatory, man, you're lost. Yeah. Well, the the double entendre of the title is amazing. The uh, fact I love that it. it's yeah. a dreamland as well as Los Angeles, yeah. Yeah. No, like the the thing is like this movie does get a lot of hate nowadays and I kind of want to talk about like why do people hate this? I mean, not just dislike it. Why doesn't like you know? Well, maybe Moonlight was better. Why did people say this movie is terrible? Well, frankly, there's like this whole uh, uh, like got to bring it down because it won so many awards and it was so hyped. People see it and are like, that does not deserve that. And some people just have to take down things that they see getting uh, undue praise. Beyond how much I love the design of La La Land, the things that were getting praised was the musicalness of it and the acting. And those are the weaker parts of the yeah. film. Damien Chazelle's vision and, and themes are definitely the strong suit. And that's why sure. and that's why I think this movie got as much praise as it did. Because I mean, yeah. Damien Chazelle, not like I've seen two of his movies. I know he did one before Whiplash and he did a short and some stuff that I just haven't seen. Right. Um, but like he does such a good job with just these characters, like very tragic characters trying to be happy. I am so on board for whatever he does next. Me too. And he is such an unbelievably like crystal clear vision. You watch these things, you know exactly what he wanted on screen. And that's and knows, amazing. And he's yeah. a master of form. Yeah. And, like, yeah. And the production design, though way more subdued, is spot on mm-hmm. in Moonlight. Yeah. I, I think there are well, things that I, I, I like you said, I think he really articulates a vision and he's really great at executing the things that he can control. He does a brilliant job on yeah. the things he can't control because it's literally not his body, not his voice singing are yeah, not yeah. so great. Yeah. And that's I, I think that's part. I think that's more of why Ryan was like, I agree with Ryan where people want to take this down because like they go, well, she's not the greatest singer in the world and neither is Ryan. Goth- and I'm not arguing with you. I think you're yeah. totally right. right. Like, I they, mean, this movie's a love letter two musicals yeah yeah but it's not a real musical exactly yeah but like and that's why like the first song out of the gate is a bunch of professional singers and professional dancers and like man i am so excited Mm -hmm. for the rest of this movie and then you get to like the scene where she's getting ready for the party and all of her roommates are professional singers professional dancers they're great and then it's like oh man you should not put them in songs with the other people who can do it right like it just does not mix i I hate to say this but i think this movie if if damien chazelle had taken all of the tones and all of his feelings about los angeles that he wanted to put on screen and didn't wrap it in a musical it may have been a better movie but then the problem the problem there is then he just remade whiplash 
Mm. He already almost did, but yeah. if you did that, then it's <laughs> almost a straight up remake of Whiplash. How, how yeah. many times can you make the same movie over and over consecutively? Yeah. That, that, that's that's. I think this is a. We'll see what its third movie, movie looks like, and then and then we can make a judgment. Call. If it's another yeah. movie about how jazz is the greatest thing in the world, it's like, all right, <laughs> calm down, dude. Yeah, <laughs> we well, get it. We you get like it. Charlie Parker. You love that, no, that, <laughs> that's his background, and yeah. which is almost why I feel like he has such an attachment to this because he started as a jazz drummer and now he's yeah. a director. So that career pivot may have been what drove him to feel this way about careers and love and everything else. Uh, the one thing I want to bring up here before, because I feel we're going to be doing a lot of the, the hate people a disservice if I don't bring this up. The major thing that people, at least one audience, really hate about this movie is this movie is apparently, I, I'm not part of this community, grossly out of touch with the current state of jazz. And a lot of people who are really into jazz right now, like people like teachers and schools, who people who own jazz clubs, watch this movie and go, no one thinks that way anymore. Like nobody in the jazz community is much le- is in that way of like, you need to do this specific version of jazz or no jazz at all. Like that was apparently a very big argument about like 10 to 15 years ago. And basically everyone's kind of gotten over it. And they're more in the John Legend category now, where it's like we need to evolve, otherwise we're just gonna die. That's, and that's probably what I want to talk about. What is John Legend, Damien yeah. Chazelle, did because he stopped being a jazz musician probably ten or fifteen years ago. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Well, it's, it's it's interesting that you mentioned that because when John Legend was on there saying all that, I was like, I was on his side the whole time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. And it's like, and it's, and I, and it's great. To John have Legend. He's like, like the anchor of this movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And that's like if you hear like if there's the an three minutes he's him. in it. Yeah. yeah. He's got the best song in the movie. Yeah. And that's like is really there's an interview with him in Rolling Stone or, or Entertainment Weekly, I don't remember which, but where he talks about this movie and he's like, I talked to Damien about it and I talked about the song I was going to write for it. And he's like, I want to make sure the song is good. Like I want to make sure that when people listen to this, and like, oh, I totally agree with Ryan Gosling. He's wasting his time. Like I want people to listen to it and go. Oh yeah, I can see. I can totally see John Legend's characters, Keith, if you will, his argument in this movie because the thing that he's make is jazz-ish, and it's actually a decent song that you could see people attaching to. And I agree with him; it's one of the best songs in the movie. He's obviously the best singer in the movie. There's yeah. no argument there. Hey, but Jude, but I like how it places like it kind of cued me in that maybe you know it wasn't a good thing that Ryan Gosling got what he wanted because he's stuck in the old traditional yeah. jazz and he never moved forward. And I think that's why it's a tragedy for him, even though he might not think so. But based gonna, off of that John Legend conversation where I was like, yeah, you're right. You're supposed to move forward with all this. But this. I still think he's happy living in the past. Right. So it's like one of those tragedy for him if you want him to go on and succeed, but that's not what he wants. Yeah. To, to be fair, there should always be someone who's living in the classics because that makes sure the classics don't die. Absolutely. Thank you, J.J. Yeah. Abrams. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's not... <laughs> I'm not going beyond not that. I'm class. not going to go down. I'm not going down that road. Road. Um, I Shift s- that to a different board. I, tr- I brought route and road into Last one week. word. Uh, but John Legend, I really enjoy in this movie. I yeah. wish he had had more than one song because he is the best singer in the movie. He's got such great presence, and I loved that he could call us, called uh, Gosling's character out and just said, "You're such a hard ass sometimes," or whatever he says. Pain in the ass. Pain in the ass. Yeah. And it's true. His character gets called out. Emma Stone's character never really gets called out. No, and that's not what this movie's here to do. Yeah. I mean, it's it, that's there's some really kind of mixed up messages in this movie. Yeah, and, but I don't think that it was attempting to say them, and that's probably why they got. I, so I guess up. Ryan Gosling's character does call her out during the dinner scene, and that's exactly when she gets quiet. Right. Oh, and that's when she runs away. That's when she runs away. Um, it's such an accurate portrayal of those characters. I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like, there's. I think this movie. Uh, will eventually, hopefully, separate itself from Moonlight and be remembered for being its own thing. Because it definitely deserves to be. It's not the greatest movie of all time. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not the greatest musical of all time. But it is a very solid movie, and I think it's a very well-made movie. And uh, I hate hate it when this happens. Because the last time I remember this happening, to such an extent, was Juno. Where everyone's like, oh, yeah. Juno's the greatest movie ever. Never mind. It's a piece of shit. If you like it, you're an idiot. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. <laughs> it's like, hold on, Two Face. Yeah, like, that, no, mm-hmm. the, it, I'm not saying it's the best movie ever, but it was a very well written movie and it was quirky and it was fun. What's wrong with that? And this movie's getting that exact same treatment. But luckily, well, uh, yeah, you, you can take your opinion and shove it back yeah. in your beard. So <laughs> that's. <laughs> Juno get <laughs> insult. There you go. Yes. Uh, Shut it down. You won. <laughs> <laughs> Juno gets to live in indie film land. You know, yeah. like, yeah. it won some, did it win some awards? Probably for writing. It was up for best picture. Yeah. That's where I, this I whole think it won for best screen pl- or best original. It screenplay. did. Yeah, Diablo yeah. killed again. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So I mean, that kind of, as far as the awards go, that got kind of the praise it deserved, in my opinion. And it probably cost a lot less, and probably made a lot less than La La Land. So I mean, 
awesome for Damien Chazelle, man. He made like yeah. this little, uh, this heartfelt kind of indie script and made it this huge budget movie. Oh yeah, with all this dancing and production I design. I look forward to seeing everything made he's going to do. Back. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that's my I hate when this happens to movies because it does not deserve it. And then a lot of people like even you hadn't seen it until we were doing the podcast, right? Because you wanted to wait till all this stuff died down. Yeah, well, I, so so just yeah. a little bit of background. I moved to Los Angeles six months ago. So I was okay. like, oh, La La Land, this is going to be the movie, yeah. the story about my life. Yeah. And then it's it, not. The, all, all the hype blew up and then all the Oscar stuff. And then I was like, all right, I, I can't touch this movie. I need to separate myself from it so I can look at it with an objective yeah. viewpoint didn't happen but i i, I gave it a I shot i had that yeah. exact same, yeah. same feeling towards a uh, napoleon dynamite yeah oh uh, yeah i was gonna bring That's, that up before juno yeah yeah I, I had the same thing with um breaking bad the breaking bad was so popular i'm like i need to give this thing a bit and then eventually i just kind of caved and watched it but i was like i'm gonna watch it like five years after it finishes because i can't compete with this and I, that, no, that I one still deserved its praise <laughs> it really did I was like, oh, no everyone's right <laughs> i still haven't i still haven't seen breaking bad for exactly that reason it's, well, such a treat. It's, it's like a fine wine i'm, yeah. I'm yeah. saving it so you can watch it everyone was right <laughs> yeah well and i think what was you know to get personal what really was cool about this movie is that i knew my wife Jandy li- loved these types of movies. You know, mm-hmm. Umbrellas of Cherbourg, American in Paris, you know, Young Girls of Rochefort. I mean, we have all those DVDs and they're gorgeous and also all that. And just to be able to kind of connect on that movie and just be like, you get an- you get another one of these movies that you you grew up loving. And it was cool, especially as this this kind of schism was happening. It was nice to be able to appreciate this harkening back to an older style of movie. I would, and that re- I really loved kind of having that moment, a, a good movie, like, yeah. a, a do- like a movie moment between the two of us. That was. It was like, yeah, it was really cool. It was very personal and very nice. Yeah. I, I think, I really do think that people just need to chill out a little bit about it. And then you come back to this movie. It is still a very well-made movie. This will be one that when people will remember hating it and then eventually watch it sometime down the road and go, fuck, that's a lot better than I remember it being. Mm-hmm. I would really like Damien to do another musical, but with real singers. Maybe and later. Pull and, some yeah. people off of Broadway. And, and an actual musical where there's more than yeah. three yeah. songs that that, yeah. that are played that you Cast can remember. Cast Anne Hathaway. Do the double hatred. Because <laughs> for some reason, everyone likes to get really mad at Anne Hathaway. I still don't understand Again, why. Again, because you have to bring down yep. the people who think they're so great. Yep. Well, I think Anne Hathaway is a wonderfully talented actress, and she's a good singer. They just need to get Wynn from uh, from Supergirl. That guy can fucking Anne sing. Anne Hathaway oh. and Wynn. Yeah. Like they, I could see some charisma there. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're casting your next movie already. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hugely Work on me- it. Hugely meta and re- referential. That uh, Mog- Mogwalian movie is yeah. a musical directed by Damien Chazelle <laughs> with those oh, two people geez. in it. <laughs> Tune in last Man. week for a Mogwalian reference. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I think it's cool. time to move into quotes, 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 quotes. All right. I'm going to go first because I've got one on deck from someone we didn't talk about. Damien Chazelle's homeboy, J.K. Simmons, yes. who I loved his little cameo in this movie. And he was telling Ryan Gosling, stick to these jazz Christmas classics. And Ryan's like, nah, I want to play one of my other jazz songs. And, you know, he sits down. And he's like, OK, OK, I'll play your songs. And he sits down at the piano and says, you know, I, I thought this was a one for me, one for you kind of town. Okay, how about two for you, one for me? Okay, how about all for you and none for me? Yes, perfect. (laughs) Uh, My favorite quote is actually between the two of them uh, right after her performance. Uh, Owen, really, really fast. Why is she carrying a stupid hat box? But uh, the quote is, Ryan Gosling says, this is home. And she yells back, no, it's not anymore. Which... That sums up so many things in there. Like you were saying, that's a great moment of emotion. Yeah. And yeah. we've all had that feeling because mm-hmm. we're all transplants. Yep. The majority of Los Angeles is. And we've all had the, that feeling where it's just like, fuck it. I don't want to be here anymore. This is not home. Yep. I want to go home. <laughs> you missed the, the line that she says just before that, which is no home home, which is like if you move to L.A. to try to do yeah. something with your career and you don't get over the fact that your parents' house is home and call this your home, you're going to go back. Yeah. So I mean, I still call Minnesota home home. I probably always will. That's how I feel about like Chicago. I wasn't even born in Chicago. That's never going yeah. to change. Chicago just always feels like home to me. I, I've yeah. heard that from so many people from <laughs> Chicago to L.A. feel yeah. the same way. I'm so detached from everything. <laughs> 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 home uh, is where I'm at. Uh, so my quote really quick. Uh, mine's not technically a line but it's still the moment that makes me smile the most i was gonna go for a lyric but that doesn't feel right mine is uh it's when she's at home home 
and it's just Ryan Gosling blaring on the horn. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it is yeah, yeah. such a good character line ish thing because it's just like oh fuck there he is yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I actually in my notes for this while well, I, I was like I tried to count how many times the horn because it's it's a recurring yeah, theme it is. I, I, I I really enjoyed it it was it was it was a fun thing to try and keep track of yeah I mean a, that illustrates his character right there yeah. with being like a bulldozer. Of like I'm just gonna keep going forward until I get what I want. Yep. And it starts off as this thing that starts with some malice, right? How many times do you get a car horn blared at you, and it turns into this romantic thing that binds them together, right? That's how they Honestly, first connect is over him blaring the horn at her. Oh my god, that is like an illustration of how they react to situations too, where she's yep. just kind of sitting there waiting, and oh. then doesn't really look at the things in front of her, and he's just like, "I gotta go." <laughs> <laughs> See, this movie isn't so bad after all. Yeah. yeah. No, the the symbolism in this movie is great. That's not a problem in this movie. Next, uh, so building on what you were talking about about the about 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 <laughs> building on what you were saying about uh, the conversations between Sebastian and Mia, I remember their character names for ah. once, um, and the feeling that you get from their conversations. It's very emblematic of of the feeling that we've all had. So uh, it's right after uh, the '80s montage sequence when they're they're both finally formally meeting. So they have a little bit of back and forth. So it ends with Sebastian going, "So you're a barista." And I can see how you could then look down on me from all the way up there. That just that like we're all trying to make it. We're all, all starting off in the same place, but for some reason you have this righteous, holier than thou feeling to somebody else who's in the same spot as you. It's very, very. I felt a lot when when I ha- saw that exchange. Yeah. And so my mom was actually just before, just before <laughs> that one, because well, it's, we it's can edit different... this in post to, to make sure you go first. Well, it's for a different. Uh, for a whole different reason so it's like you're all like into the themes and everything and i'm just like i just like this sarcastic banter uh I, sebastian's like i can admit you know that i was curt but requesting that i ran from a serious musician is just too far and she's like my lord did you just say a serious musician it's like, no, I don't think so and it's like can i borrow what you're wearing why because i have an audition next week and i'm playing a serious firefighter <laughs> and that banter is just oh so beautiful yeah. the sarcasm of her character which yeah. is great yeah, their chemistry was fantastic. I really enjoyed just watching them together. Good. Yeah. Don't worry, you will for oh, 20 movies. I yeah. never <laughs> talked about the other co-star of this film. Which one? Ryan's lock of hair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that lock of hair in front of his face when he's playing the piano is a co-star. It was such a big deal that when they made fun of it on uh, Jimmy Fallon, they put a fake lock of hair on his hair. Oh, <laughs> it's so good. Oh, you like this? All right, yes. got one too. Perfect. Perfect. I'll, do it. I'll keep on. it for the photo. Oh. <laughs> I'm can suddenly I, I more d- attracted yes. to you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Brian. Don't fight me. It's cool. You got the lock of hair. I can't fight with that. <laughs> uh, okay, so review system for today is going to be any and all musicals. Any and all. I'll go first because I've obviously been thinking about this for a little while. I'm going with Hairspray, the most current remake. Um, and I mean that is probably more of a compliment than I mean to give to La La Land, although I do like La La Land. It, it did a good job of reinvigorating what I want to see in musicals. Whereas I think Hairspray is one of the best modern musical, musicals ever made. And if you haven't seen it or haven't given it a fair shot yet, you need to. It's so good. And it's the best made musical in fucking years. Um, <laughs> but this one did a very good job of doing the same sort of thing, but with a kind of a wider audience of like, Guys, this is still a genre, and it can be fun, and we should keep doing it. And I think this movie does the same sort of message that Hairspray attempted to. Do, do you think that the success of La La Land will, will get us a lot more musicals in the future? Nope. Because mm-hmm. we've had a few it's, now, and they keep kind of they keep doing very yeah. well, but they keep not doing it. Unless it has Disney attached to it, I don't think it will. Yeah. And that's the thing it's hard to separate from now. Yep. Which is yeah. why you, you don't even yeah. have actors trying to do that that classical kind of dance and yeah. Dance training because it's like that's yeah. just not the, that doesn't exist. The people no who are it. a legit triple threat are few and far between nowadays. Actually, one of the best ones is Nev Campbell. She doesn't really do anything anymore. She mm. can sing. Catherine Zeta Jones. Yep. Again, doesn't really do doesn't much. Doesn't do much anymore. Yep. Johnny Depp, right? Right. No. Just like last week, jokes are still failing. <laughs> 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 we don't need to make fun of you, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> we laugh at the failure of the jokes, not yeah. the jokes themselves. Yeah. Yeah. But where's the rum? <laughs> uh, I can go next because, I mean, having seen a bunch of movies that inspire this, it's fairly easy. I'm going to go with Umbrellas of Cherbourg uh, on a literal kind of one-to-one. It ends very much very bittersweet in the same kind of way, looking at what you could have had and saying it just – it's that bittersweetness of it. And there's kind of – it starts with a you know very kind of romanticized version of romance and kind of breaks down through it and and just – it has a very good also opening number with just umbrellas in synchronous mm-hmm. in 
a very good strong opening to a movie so cool yeah next frozen <laughs> Uh, just, just gonna leave it hanging well, out no. there. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about women achieving their goals. Sure. Uh, the men help them along, and uh, I love the snowman though, in La La Land. Yes. Um, it was a gigantic success, which everyone got really sick of. Mostly because you had to keep watching over and over again with either your daughters or your nieces or anyone around you. You couldn't escape it. Um, and the design of it was really fantastic while some people still complained about things about, uh, about it being a princess, I guess. I don't remember what everyone complained about Frozen. It was that damn snowman. I don't that's, have that's the what best hated. analogy. I'm sorry. That was way better than you give yourself credit. That, that was really <laughs> yeah. worth no, it for I, a while. I, 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 I no. thought you did a way better job than I'm probably going to do next. Yeah. So, so just, next? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was real smooth. And yeah. um, so I'm going to go with West Side Story. And nice. I'm going to go with, not for the reasons you think. Um, Sucks. But it's, 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 it's a um, in a capsule kind of moment, right? New York in West Side Story at that moment for what I was trying to portray. It it it's not accurate, but it 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 definitely elicits feelings about that era, about that moment. And I think in five, ten, fifteen years, that's what La La Land's gonna be. You're gonna be able to look at that and feel a lot of the nostalgia for whatever we're calling this decade. Uh, you're going to be able to look at that and appreciate Los Angeles at that moment in time for what it is and movies and the era that it captures. Yeah, that totally works. I'm going to piggyback on that and say the producers, which is oh. flawed, uh, still really good, and a great portrayal of what the industry is like. Perfect. Is that everybody? Yeah. Cool. So that's the end of our La La Land episode. Uh, and I'm not joking when I said earlier, next week we have Moonlight. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm really excited to talk about that one, too. I Next week, it, we have La La Land. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought that was a pretty good idea to put those right next to each other. Uh, just lean into what everyone is talking about. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so you can find us online, ATH underscore podcast on Twitter, everywhere else, ATH podcast. Find us on our website, ATHpod.com, where you can find all of our articles. Uh, you can find links to our new Spotify series that comes out every Friday morning. Um, which is both magnificent and terrible, but in the best way possible. Yeah. Um, I listen to it all the time now. I Especially call, it, I call I, it musical whiplash. Yeah, it's it's uh, <laughs> it's pretty great. My the one that I organized, I did uh, very intentionally to kind of jar and annoy people. <laughs> but like, it's all good music, so it's not the end of the world. But you will be. It'll be a lot of like. Listen to a song, listen to a song, like, oh my God, it's Anaconda by Nicki Minaj now. Why? It's yeah, I, I love our different Brian. Approach. Yeah. <laughs> Why, Brian? Why? <laughs> I love the approaches we bring to it. Because yeah. I, I, I try to really kind of blend. Yeah. Like, is, yeah. Weave them together, and you're just like, fuck that. No, I try to like, I try to get like three, four together, and then just one complete left field. Yeah. And I think I did a good job with that. Yeah. Uh, and then you can check out Mike's podcast, which is, I already forgot the name of it. That, uh, that other show. That other uh, show. That other show.com. Somehow we got that domain. Nice. Um other show pod on twitter it's on Facebook. just that other show and i'll figure out seo later cool <laughs> there you go ringing endorsements yep uh it's not very good <laughs> there's the ringing endorsement uh. you've seen other shows not very good <laughs> we'll put a link to it you can decide for yourself thank you um on that thank you very much for listening 